Good morning. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk here. They say fellows keep abu be getting abused every year, and I think I'm an example of that, but it's good, it's good. Life's good right now. All right, so, you know, instead of evidence-based medicine and what do the journals say, this is more about how God created us and how we are screwing up our anatomy, okay? So, arterial anatomy starts, for the lower extremity, starts from the aorta. That everyone, you know, has to remember that you, you do non-invasive testing and you find um, lower extremity disease, you have to keep in mind there could be proximal disease too based on whatever non-invasive testing you're doing. So the aorta goes into right common and left common iliac, everyone knows that, the common iliacs then <clears throat> bifurcate into external and internal iliac. Now I'm gonna give you these little do not forget things in, in between, little snapshots. So remember the profunda keeps the leg open, okay? Just remember that, if nothing else, remember that. So in the pelvic anatomy, an angiogram, if you do an AP angiogram, you can see the aorta, you can see the renals. But in the pelvis, you have to be mindful that an ap optimal angulation is very revealing. So if you want to see the left common iliac bifurcation and you want to see the hypogastric properly, it's best to have a little RAO, an contra oblique angle, <clears throat> that can open up that bifurcation. And similarly, if you want to see the right common iliac bifurcation, you might want to have a little LAO. It's not always the case, but if you cannot see it, then this would be very revealing, to be honest. Um, the common iliac artery becomes external, internal. The internal has a pretty important role in the pelvis, and that has the anterior division and the posterior division that gives rise to the gluteal arteries, the uterine, sorry, the uterine arteries. And then, more importantly in anatomy, it's, no, it's not just important to know what bifurcates into what and what branches into what, but it's also important to know what helps if things don't go right. So, looking at this picture, I don't know if everyone gets the feeling, but when I saw it, I was like, what the? Because uh, if you see here, the aorta comes bifurcates, you see the right common iliac, and you don't see the left common iliac. But the fun part is that you see the external lighting up, right? And uh, then we look at it closely, you turn the angle, you have a radiologist giving you a wonderful 3D reconstruction, and then you see this little squiggly vessel coming all the way down there. And uh, that vessel is really important because that becomes the Winslow pathway of collateralization to the leg. So people who smoke or people who have um, you know, aortoiliac disease with specifically common iliac occlusion, they have a collateral pathway starting from the subclavian artery to the internal mammary artery, going to the super, super, superior epigastric to the inferior epigastric, and into the e external iliac. And that's what feeds their legs. So once they have a cabbage with a lemograph to the LAD, their leg goes cold and that's when we get called. It has happened once in my fellowship, but we were scratching our heads, and uh, obviously this was the reason why. Um, the second important pathway is the cruciate anastomosis, and I cannot tell you how many times in case conference Dr. Lumsden has tortured us with this question, which le led to a little more hair loss than I had before I started fellowship. So, <laughs> so cruciate, hair, cruciate anastomosis, this is important because when the external or when the common iliac goes away, I mean, sorry, external iliac or the common femoral goes away, this is what takes care of the profunda, and then the profunda gives collaterals down to the leg. So it's, it's uh, at the top, it's inferior gluteal. Do you have a pointer? Yes, it's the inferior gluteal. Ascending branch of the first perforator going up from the profunda, and then the lateral and medial femor circumflex femoral arteries. And they come into the fe profunda femoris, and then they supply the lower extremity. <clears throat> A few anomalies that we should remember, they're not very common, but obviously anomalies are very common in case conferences. So a persistent sciatic artery, actually it is after the superior gluteal comes off, the internal pudendal continues into the pelvis and becomes sciatic artery, and then takes the path of the inferior gluteal artery going through the sciatic foramen. Now it's important because in this patient you will have palpable distal pulses, okay? But you will not have a palpable femoral pulse, and that you'll be scratching your head again as to why is this big, but this is the reason why. Because you have inflow into the leg, you just don't have through the femoral artery. All right, so the common and profunda femoris arteries, um, obviously this is the most talked about in all vascular um, patients, is the external iliac, once it crosses the inguinal ligament, becomes the common femoral. The common femoral branches into the su superficial and deep external pudendal, superficial epigastric, superficial circumflex iliac, and then gives off the profunda femoris artery, and then becomes con continues as the superficial femoral artery. The profunda femoris is very important because it gives a huge network of collaterals, not just to the hip, but also to the lower extremity. 
And that comes to me to the next question. Is the profile that keeps the leg open? Okay, whatever happens, do not forget that. Okay, so at the SFA, it's a very unique artery actually because um, you see a lot of disease in the SFA. It's very common. And my question used to be is why do you have you know so much disease in the SFA? It's it's uh, if you look at the dynamics. Uh, when people walk and run, the SFA not only moves up and down, side to side, but also has a rotational movement when you move your leg. And you think about it, muscles move it so much. And that's why there is so, mu there is so much of sheer stress that makes the intima more predisposed, or the media more predisposed to having atherosclerosis there. Um, the important part in anatomy is the superficial femoral artery starts a little anteromedial and then becomes posterior to the femur uh, as you go up to the adductor hi hiatus and then behind the knee. So depending on where you want to expose this, um, depends on where you want to make the incision. Uh, the popliteal artery is a continuation of the SFA through the adductor hiatus, everyone knows that. Um, it also has important collateral supply if in case the distal popliteal or the trifurcation goes off. So it has medial and lateral genicular, it has a middle genicular, inferior medial and lateral genicular, the sural branch, the anterior tibial, and then the tibioperoneal trunk. And that becomes the site of the second cruciate anastomosis at the knee, is where you have the descending genicular, descending genicular, superior lateral, inferior lateral genicular, middle and the inferior genicular artery. So all these contribute to flow being still there in the leg, although not inline flow, but you still have flow going down to the foot. Don't forget, the profunda keeps the leg open. All right. So distal arterial anatomy, that's the that's the sexiest topic with lower extremity interventions, right? So, and which is the most uh, difficult topic to intervene when you come to lower extremity intervention. So, anterior tibial, everyone knows that, TP trunk, peroneal, and posterior tibial arteries. And the, uh, the takeoff of the anterior tibial is like someone raising their leg up this way. So it's important to remember when you, know, you see one snapshot, and if it is an AP view, then the side that the, tip, the AT comes off obviously is the lateral side, remember that, always. Um, so the AT comes off at the trifurcation, and this is a, a C, axial CT scan that comes off. So this is the, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is the AT coming off, and that's the TP trunk forming. As you come a little lower down, that's the AT, which is anteromedial, I mean anterolateral, and then the TP trunk that is uh, posterolateral. Um, and you start going on to the trifurcation. So at every little level, you will have difference in the orientation of the arteries, and that depends on, it all depends on your exposure. So where you want to expose what determ is determined by where these arteries traverse. This is a wonderfully simple diagram, which was, you know, hit into our head during medical school, but I, I bring this up to demonstrate compartments of the leg, which is important for you know, fasciotomy, which is important for dissection of these arteries. Um, four compartments in the leg, and there's no evidence-based medicine to any five, it's just four. No one's made any papers on that. So four compartments. There's an anterior compartment, there's a lateral compartment, there is a posterior deep, and there's a posterior superficial compartment. The anterior tibial artery lies somewhere in the anterior compartment here. Okay, posterior tibial and then the peroneal artery are deep to the deep uh, posterior compartment. So obviously your dissections <coughs> and approach to these arteries would differ. And as you go down, your approach to the peroneal can also differ. It could be a medial or lateral approach. Um, although it's pretty consistently behind the fibula, the peroneal artery. All right, this is just lateral, middle. okay. Then we come to anomalies again, the aberrant tibial artery. Again, this is only important when you have to intervene and you don't see on a CT angio, you don't see a, a standard AT coming off and on an angiogram you see something coming off at the top, it comes from the popliteal artery above the knee. Uh, again, this is important if uh, you have to intervene, you have to just keep an idea, keep in, keep in mind that this, these anomalies can exist. Um, the anatomy of the foot is, obviously we leave it up to the podiatrists and they call us when they, we find that there is no flow. But uh, it's important to know a little bit that the anterior tibial artery continues as the dorsalis pedis artery. The posterior tibial artery becomes posterior tibial artery and then goes into the medial and lateral plantar arches and that becomes the plantar arch and they communicate with each other. The anterior tibial artery, it crosses the extensor retinaculum on the foot and then becomes the DP. And this is important when you're doing a fem far away bypass on the anterior tibial or the DP, which the patient will clot off anyways, but still it's a good exercise, but uh, eventually. Um, 
the AT becomes the DP at the foot. Um, and then similarly, the PT crosses the flexor retinaculum behind the medial malleolus and then becomes a posterior tibial artery. And that communicates with the DP between the first and second metatarsals. This communication is not, obviously, it's the most threatened one, I would say, because if that wouldn't be the case, if that would be the case all the time, we'd be out of business because then there would be no inline flow. Remember the key points, my friends. You know what's coming up, right? Right, so first of all, attendings love to pimp you on anatomy, okay, especially when you're least expecting it. It has happened many a time. So it's absolutely crucial to understand pathology and algorithms for treatment because, I, you know, we keep saying that the eyes do not see what the mind does not know. So if you don't know what you're looking for or if you don't know where you're looking for, it's very hard to get to the, get to the place. And if nothing else, remember, the profunda keeps the leg open. All right, this is my wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much.